Good morning, everybody. You are watching the breakout of the Q&A session. This is one of the specific questions that was asked. So if you're looking for the answer to just that question, you can watch just this video. If, on the other hand, you want to watch the entire Q&A session, which has a lot more feedback from the live audience, just click here and you can watch that entire video. Start off with one, and this is a pretty generic question from Justin Farish, and there's already some commentary on here, but I just wanted to address it a little bit. It's a two-parter. He says, I have a question. I'm looking for, I'm looking at a few cameras for cinema, documentary, nature slash travel, and YouTube. So pretty, pretty widespread use and clearly all video. Budget is four to five thousand dollars max. And you were looking at the GH5, DVX200, and Sony 700R. And essentially, what do I recommend? And then he also asks about glass. What lenses do I recommend? And specifically at the bottom here we're looking at now, it says, also do Rokinon lenses work on the GH5 without an adapter? So two part question here. First of all, as many of viewers know, I'm when it comes to cameras, I'm not comparing the Lumix cameras to anything else out there. I am sponsored by Panasonic, so I am clearly, most obviously, going to recommend the Panasonic camera. Sony makes great cameras, Nikon makes great cameras, Canon, make, they all make great cameras. You can't go wrong, right? They all make great cameras, they all have different advantages and disadvantages. So I'm not going to talk about those other models. I'm also not really familiar with them, so even if I wanted to, I couldn't. But I will tell you why this camera rocks, the GH5 that you're comparing, you're considering. Also, I'm going to jump ahead to the question about lenses. He asked if, uh, if a Rokinon can be used without adapters. This is one of the beautiful things about the Micro Four Thirds format, and that's not just GH5, any Lumix camera, or any Olympus camera. Micro Four Thirds is an open standard, which means a lot of different lens manufacturers can make lenses for it. It's not just Panasonic slash Lumix that makes lenses. You can put an Olympus lens on here, an Olympus Micro Four Thirds. Rokinon makes a Micro Four Thirds mounts. You get Micro Four Thirds mounts from just about every lens manufacturer worth its salt these days, which is pretty cool. You get a lot, a lot of choice. And often you'll find really interesting lens choices that are kind of on the on the lower end range of what you would expect. One of my favorite lenses is made by a Chinese manufacturer called Zhongyi. It's a 25 millimeter f0.95 all manual lens, and it's great. I love that lens. It has a, a unique look to it that's different from the Panasonic lenses, super shallow depth of field, but it's all manual. So, you know, it's just whatever you need, whatever you want. But that is one of the nice things. There's a lot of choices out there. Now, when it comes to the video on this, for the documentary, vlogging, um, cinema, nature travel, really, again, covering the full gamut, some of the, one of the biggest advantages of this camera is is the quality not only of what you capture internally, but what you're able to capture externally. So at NAB, I was at NAB last week, and I spent some time at the Atomos booth, and they're really showing off their new Ninja uh, Ninja Shogun. I think that's the right name. They're kind of combining names there. And it's a external $1,000 recorder that allows you to capture straight to ProRes, allows you to see your image on a bigger screen, gives you a few other advantages. But the big, big thing about it is that you can capture 422 10-bit 4K footage externally. Now this camera will capture 422 8-bit or 420 10-bit, but if you want the best of both, you gotta go external. And that's something that is, I don't wanna say utterly unique because that I could be wrong, but as far as I know, this is the only camera that does that. So if you want that absolute top quality, then this is a great way to go. Plus, if you add something like V-Log to it, then you get your expanded dynamic range. You're going to have to grade, right? V-Log footage, you have to grade. It comes out of the camera looking very flat, but you can load LUTs on the, on the camera itself. You can load LUTs into the external recorder and see what your footage is going to look like. And it was really cool at NAB when uh, Jeremy, the president of Atomos, was doing a live demonstration showing off the advantage of V-Log and dragging through the exposure adjustment and bringing the exposure down on this really, really high dynamic range scene and being, and you could see how if you shot it normally, your really bright sky would be blown out, the clouds, the sun and the clouds would be blown out. But as you shoot in, in V-Log for HDR grading, I guess would be the right way to put it, uh, you could really pull that in and pull in that extra dynamic range. So that is a pretty unique advantage to this, and so it's definitely something I would consider. If you're, if you're looking at cinema, you want that really top quality cinema look to be able to shoot in V-Log and have the dynamic range to do anything you want is pretty awesome. So that is the answer to that question. <laughs>